Radio. In some of my articles, I talked about you know going back and using the demos, which were a different speed and in a different key, and uh, trying to take the um, the uh, some of the tracks from a uh, song, you know, a version of the song that was two beats a minute quicker, and use the keyboard parts on the demo that was two beats a minute short, it was slower, and a half step different, right? And uh, Walter just came in and said, well, I know you can do it. Uh, I'll see you on Monday, right? And he would disappear <laughs> and, and leave me to figure out how to put these things together. And uh, some of them, you know, uh, were fun challenges. Um, some, some of them I was, you know, ready to swallow the business end of a shotgun, I think. <laughs> but uh, um, those things have been a lot of fun over the years. Uh, there were times when before there were sequencers when we had to, Donald would come in and say, I want this tape to be, this tune to be perfectly steady. The only way it'll work is if it's perfectly steady because I can't get the words out, you know, correctly. All the little syllables in the words won't fit unless the thing doesn't move and it has to be exactly this tempo. And uh, one of those was uh, Showbiz Kids and there was no sequencers no really good drum machines. There were these little rhythm ace things would wander around. And it had to be very symmetrical. So we ended up just recording eight bars. Um, he said, you can, you can make this work out, right? You can loop this or do something. And I said, sure. <laughs> so he said, okay. And then just forgot about how it was going to happen. And we went into the studio. <laughs> Nobody ever played more than eight bars. We just did eight bars, drums, bass, guitars, then had, did the rhythm guitar overdub just on the eight bars, did it over and over again until it was fine. We'd make little loops on the two track to make sure there was no hitch in it where you could hear something repeat. Background singers came in, just sang on the eight bars, every the horn, I mean, whatever, all the instruments, synthesizers, everything, just on the eight bars. Got completely done except for lead guitar and lead vocal. And then they said, okay. There you go. We'll be back in a couple of days to uh, make it a song. And uh, so the choices were to make copies and edit them all together or um, figure out some way to make a 24-track. This is on 24-track tape, right? Two-inch. And uh, so we were using a 3M uh, analog 24-track that has this little isolated loop where the tape goes in and the erase and record header on one side and... There's a little, there's a little, uh, <coughs> oops. Tape comes in like this. There's pinch rollers are here. Tape goes around this little idler, comes back out onto the next reel. And so this is the erase head, record head, the playback head. And there's this little idler here. So I went to 3M and got an extra one of these little idlers. And I mounted it on a camera tripod. And at 30 IPS, this eight bar loop was uh, longer than this room. So we had to open the doors out into the studio and take, take the loop. I taped the reels down so they wouldn't turn. <coughs> and had the tape go around the inside of one of the reels, out, whoops. <laughs> Can't take me anywhere. <laughs> out to the studio, around this little idler, back in, around this tape reel, in here, and uh, pushed play, and this was the master tape, pushed play, hoped that all the tensions were right, and then record on a second machine, and it was uh, the eight-bar little thing, go to Las Vegas, as the tape went screaming out into the other room, came back, <laughs> recorded it for a whole bunch of time, and listened back to it. Hey, it was fine. Um, and uh, then they did the lead guitar and the lead vocal over it, and it was done, and it was perfectly steady. And uh, um, didn't speed up, didn't do anything. And there were problems like that that these guys would come up with over the years that we'd have to figure out some way to, uh, some way to solve. Um, on the Gaucho album, uh, Donald wanted 
some songs that were perfectly steady, and he uh, didn't want to use all that was there then drum machine wise was things like this rhythm chord rhythm ace that had little uh, really chunky rhythm sounds like uh, when you buy an organ that has built in rhythm section in it. And uh, so that's when I built this little computer thing, a Wendell, that used, it was actually the first sampling drum machine. And uh, it was at the same time that Roger Lynn was building the Lynn um, LM8 or whatever the first Lynn machine was. Roger Lynn and I went to the same assembly language classes, learning to write computer programs so we could go home and build our drum machines, right? Um, so I, I built, he was building them to uh, sell, make a company out of and sell them. I was just building one, only had to be one. Um, so uh, where his were selling, I guess then for like $5,000 a piece or something, um, my one drum machine cost $80,000. And uh, that's because it had to be higher fi and So the Lin machine wasn't even done yet, right? So I hadn't heard that. It had to be high fi enough to uh, um, not be able to tell it wasn't a real drummer and had to be perfectly steady and you had to be able to move things around in little teeny increments. And uh, the first thing that that played on was uh, Hey 19, was the first record ever used as a, a sampling drum machine. And uh, then it was just eight bits, and but the sample rate, because I was not very good at filter design, the sample rate was like uh, 125 kilohertz was the sample rate. Um, so then when we did the Donald Fagan's Nightfly album, um, I built a new machine that was 16 bits, and we hooked it up to the 3M machine so it would transfer information digitally out of the 3M machine into the computer, onto the disk, um, and it would play it back from the computer right back onto the tape so there was never any even digital copy, you know, uh, even analog converter generation loss, putting drum stuff on and off the tape. Um, and these are because, you know, I built these things because it would take a lot less time for me to get a bunch of people together, figure out how to do this, design these machines, build them, go in the studio, push play, make it happen, than it would to be in the studio with Donald punching in one drum beat at a time or cutting the same tune you know, 400 times with 400 different drummers um, to get what he wanted out of it. Um, so it was basically a, a self-defense mechanism to uh, uh, so Gaucho only took two years instead of we might still be in the studio working on it. <laughs> um, so turn this back on for a minute. Um, so that the uh, the forward-looking uh, problem-solving uh, outlook for. Donald and Walter and Gary Katz, the producer of Steely Dan, um, you know, actually helped uh, uh, increase the the uh, the quality of other projects that I would work on when there weren't uh, um, Steely Dan records. Um, there was uh, an Al Jarreau record, uh, "We're in This Love Together." Um, Steve Gadd was a drummer on the take. Uh, Jay Graydon was producing it. He was doing it at his house and. During the take, uh, Steve Gadd broke the head on the snare drum. But they kept going. He kept, he just would play the rim. Sounded like junk. You know, uh, but they got through the take. That was the take. They tried a few other takes, replaced the snare drum, tried a few other. Another, nothing came out as well. Um, so Jay Graydon knew I had this little box. So he called me up, had me come over. And I used the Wendell to replace the snare drum and uh, the kick drum I had to replace too because on the kick drum you could hear the rim shot that he was playing in, instead of the snare drum. And so we replaced those things and uh, so the snare and the kick that are on that song um, were this, this uh, computer drum machine replacement of what actually happened in the recording session. And uh, there are other things that I was able to work on like that. Um, because of the, the technology and the things that were afforded to me by the uh, Steely Ann projects.